स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया गुड मॉर्निंग वी बिगिन टूडेज क्लास एंड येस्टरडे वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कॉन्फ्लिक्ट एज अ प्लॉट एलिमेंट टूडे वील बी लुकिंग एज लुकिंग एट कैरेक्टर एज अ प्लॉट एलिमेंट सो आई हैव बिफोर यू फोर कैरेक्टर्स फ्रॉम फोर डिफरेंट क्लासिक्स एनी हॉल डायन कीटन ऑफकोर्स एज एनी हॉल हॉली गो लाइटली ऑड्री हेबन in breakfast at tiffanys huno from huno and um, audrey tutu from emily so um, if i ask you what is character and when you look at these four female characters what what do you understand why why are we interested in characters at all do we need to have interesting characters what would you say to that सिद्धार्थ ओके ओके व्हाट कुड बी दोज अदर एलिमेंट्स ऑफ कैरेक्टर इज ऑल अबाउट इंटरेक्शन विथ अदर कैरेक्टर्स ओके एनीथिंग एल्स देयर ओन एक्शंस इट नीडेंट बी इंटरेक्शंस yeah you're contradicting him but then you give me some plots contradict him later give me your own point on or your own view on what what is a character a uh, character can actually be uh, something that actually propels the entire plot okay character this is important he is a theoretician in the making character propels plot okay character perceives or views a situation okay anything so why are these characters so important to us anything that is common among all these uh, characters they are conform to the society norms in some way or the other good uh, they are all non conformists unique individuals very often eccentric so all that contributes towards lending a touch of interest to these characters so characterization so um, there there has been lot of uh, writings on characterization but what makes a character interesting is uh, yeah so can you think of more characters apart from these uh, that come to your mind when you think of great characters on screen as a other character who doesn't conform to society standards you can have jack nicholson's character in one flew over the cuckoo's nest okay so um one flew over the cuckoo's nest jack nicholson in the movie is a memorable character Michael Corleone is a memorable character from some other movie. Tony Montana is a memorable character from Scarface. Yeah, and so anything else? I mean, you you all watch movies. Any number of. Hmm. Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. Um, Hannibal Lecter. Yes. that's a memorable character uh, closer home our own munna bhai series okay what makes munna bhai series that popular not the plot the characterization and if you look at all great characters they all stand out because of one is the way they perceive society perceive situations and also the way they interact with other so you know um that also matters so if they are unique characters they stand out that's just a very uh, simplistic 
uh, introduction to what makes characters interesting. Now, um, many a time what happens is uh, appearances of character, they are extremely important. Characters become important because of their appearance, appearance make them stand out. Fargo and Aaron Brockovich. Now, what is so important about Frances McDermott's appearance in Fargo? She is pregnant, she is a small town police officer, okay. she is pregnant. Does she look like a police officer from any angle? Well, um, perhaps you know her, uh, her clothes. Her, you know she has the uniform. But apart from that, does she subscribe to the uh, norms of a standard police woman? No, she doesn't. She stands out. Okay. Who would expect a pregnant female police officer investigating um, a very brutal murder? Okay. So that those are so appearance does matter. How what kind of a look you give to a particular? character that also contributes towards making of a character. Julia Roberts in Erin Brockovich, it got her the Academy Award. Why does she stand out by way of her appearance? She is after all a social activist, an environmental activist, but what is the way she dresses up? Uh, she was a beauty queen too. Very grungy, queen yeah, fashion, but also not high fashion, yes. Beauty Queen too in the same movie. Yeah. She okay. Mentions. Yeah. So that again goes um, against the type. Okay. So you do not expect a social activist to be dressed the way Julia Roberts dresses up. Otherwise, it would give a very commonplace appearance. She doesn't stand out. But in order to make her stand out, you have to give her certain unique attributes, and their looks up count. Any other example you can think of? Okay. Uh, characters are also determined by their accents, dialects, their vocabulary, the kind of grammar they speak and what do all these things suggest. When Munabhai speaks in a particular accent, what does it tell you about him? Where does he come from? Okay. So, his socio-economic educational background. And where does the comedy arise in Munna Bhai series? Placing, uh, uh, placing a, uh, a, that kind of a character <coughs> in completely incongruous situation. Yeah. So, you would not expect a doctor or medical student to uh, dress or to behave or to speak in the way he does. So, that's, that's, uh, that contributes towards lending a uniqueness to the character, okay. incongruity. Educational background, of course, and then uh, uh, your accents and dialogues, dialect, dialects also give away the mental processes a character goes through. So, uh, uh, for example, when we are talking about accents and dialogues and uh, and how they con contribute towards making a character, there is another movie, Possession. Uh, is anyone familiar with this film, Gwyneth? Paltrow and Aaron Eckhart. No, in this uh, she is a, a PhD scholar and he is a research associate and they are uh, doing research on uh, certain 18th century poets. Okay, so, their romance runs parallel with those two characters they are working on. Okay. So, their dialects um, uh, and their accents differ from the way uh, uh, the couple in the earlier generation behaved and spoke and yeah. so that also um, because see when, when uh, the younger generation is shown to be more uh, vernacular in its speech whereas the previous generation is more formal okay. so that is what gives out the difference between the two. Uh, characters are often determined by uh, action, 
external action as well as internal action. We have been talking about external, internal even when we are discussing conflict. Conflict could be external. Could, do you remember what were those external forces? against nature, against against power structures, yeah. Uh, we looked at the example of one flew over the cuckoo's nest, yeah, that is again uh, a, a rebelling against a conformist society. So, that is external rebellion. Internal rebellion uh, or a conflict, we also we sh, uh, saw films like Taxi Driver. Um, so, so is character. So, external action, Schwarzenegger. Will you find internal action? That would be extremely incongruous. Azad, do you have something to say to that? <coughs> but when you go and watch a movie starring Schwarzenegger, in which there is a lot of inter internal action, that must be an exception. Okay, but when you go for a Schwarzenegger movie, um, including the recent <laughs> Expendables, and also um, the, the most recent one, The Last Stand. Yeah. Okay. So he doesn't disappoint. Okay. He will disappoint when he start having internal dialogue or become an existentialist hero. So he is no Godardian hero. You expect something from Schwarzenegger, and yes, it's, we are also talking in other words about a star's image. Okay. So a star, uh, a star's image also contribute towards the action he performs. I'm not saying action hero, what how he acts on screen. Okay. So, doing what comes naturally to the character. Internal action, think Anthony Perkins from Psycho. You can also think of Anthony Hopkins, the other Anthony in Silence of the Lambs. Okay. Plenty of internal action. Now, for example, when you look at the still of Anthony Perkins uh, standing below this huge stuffed bird, what does it tell you? Maybe at that point in the movie, it does not tell you anything, but when you finish watching the film, when you complete watch, uh, when you are done with the movie, does this scene mean anything to you? The, st the image of the stuffed bird. No one seems to have watched Psycho. Predatory. Predatory. Okay. So, he is a predator. And this uh, Hitchcock gives you that clue from the beginning of the movie. Predatory as well as the idea of a stuffed bird. At the end, we realize his mother is also a stuffed mother. Okay, a stuffed figure. Yes. Also, his face is—I don't know if I'm reading too much into it—but his face is half dark, half light. This split personality. No eyes. Yes, very good. Okay, so uh, face covered in shades of light and darkness. Yeah, so uh, we are not able to really understand what this character is all about. So these are the clues filmmakers give. Internal action. Yeah, we have been talking about. Are you talking to me, Robert De Niro? Talking to himself, having. Yeah, a lot of action, but much of it is also mental process. Otherwise, you see, if you watch Taxi Driver, and I again urge you to watch Taxi Driver, you will find that uh, um, there is very little violence on screen, except in the climax where he goes on a rampage, killing everyone in that brothel. Hmm? Otherwise, you do not find any physical violence in the movie. Much of the violence comes through the character's uh, body language, the music, again uh, the way lights, the you know interplay of lights and darkness. Harvey Keitel, again from another uh, Martin Scorsese movie, Mean Streets. Lot of internal conflict, and therefore representing internal action. So he is a he is a gangster. At the same time, he is torn between his loyalty towards uh, his masters, the gangster masters, uh, the gang lords, and his friends, his friends, and uh, as well as his religion. 
So, therefore, we find him uh, very often uh, doing penance, running his fingers through a burning candle or through a match, a burning match stick, yeah, self punishment. Yes, and this is something, so it tells you a lot about internal action. Watch Mean Streets if you have not already. Um, names of characters, the way filmmakers name characters also tell you a lot about the characters. So, Holly go lightly <laughs> says a lot about, she goes lightly, she does not want to carry uh, the baggage of a past. Yeah. If you read the novel Breakfast at Tiffany's, then she has a past, okay, but she wants to do away with that. Therefore, hmm? So, names are often evocative, Mo names are often symbolic, they can also be ironic. They can, you can name a person a, a, a particular quality and the person's character could be exactly opposite of that, but then that lends uh, an ironic touch, a funny touch. Okay. Names also connote. So, you have done denotative and connotative quotes. So, no, yeah. So, uh, the saint Val Kilmer, of course, it is uh, based on uh, a comic book series, but uh, have you watched Saint? Val Kilmer's Saint, okay. you must watch it, it is not such an old movie, uh, maybe 90s. Yeah. So, uh, so, what is the Saint all about? Is he a saint? He is a master thief okay, and a, mas a master in disguise. Rithik Roshan's character in Dhoom was based on the saint. Okay. He is an expert thief, he works alone and he changes disguises um, in a flash of a second. The name of the character. Daniel Day Lewis, for example, is Hawk Eye playing uh, uh, an Indian, a Native American in the last of the Mohicans. Hawk Eye, and what does Hawk Eye mean? Sure. Who has, uh, you know, uh, a penetrating insight as well as he never m misses a shot. Okay, so he is expert in both these things, in uh, reading people as well as never missing a shot. So that's and um, Ben Stiller. Okay, meet the <laughs> meet the parents and the series, and you know what his name connotes in the movie. Characters can also be seen through multiple perspectives. Another feature of characters. Characters. Well, you see. Uh, you are something, you mean something to your parents, you mean something to your friends and you mean something else to your teachers. Okay, so, multiple perspectives, yeah, characters seen through different points of view and we have some very good example in Citizen Kane. How many of you have watched Citizen Kane? Good, quite a few. Please watch it all over again for this course. So, what does Citizen Kane, how, what is the quest all about? Rosebud, to understand uh, what was the exact meaning of the, uh, of the word rosebud uh, as uttered by the dying publishing tycoon Charles Foster Kane, what did it mean? And th there is a journalist, throughout the movie we have a quest for discovering the meaning of this word, rosebud. So, while he is trying to decipher the meaning of rosebud, he comes across a series of people who give multiple points of view on whom? On Charles Foster Kane, what he meant to them, what he was all about. What he was, all about. So, uh, was he a saint or a sinner? We never know. So, Velvet Gold Mine is a very niche kind of a movie. Is anyone familiar with that, with this? I thought we are, uh, because it is a Christian Bale movie, Evan McGregor and Christian Bale and Velvet Goldmine is about the pop culture scenario in the 60s Britain. And there is a journalist played by Christian Bale, who investigates the life and times of a popular rock star. 
and it's, it follows the same trajectory as Citizen <coughs> King. Uh, characters can be static. For example, uh, Brad Pitt's character in A River Runs Through It. Has anyone watched the movie? A River Runs Through It. Uh, it is uh, one of uh, his earlier movies directed by Robert Redford. So, he plays um, you know a Paul, he is impulsive, drinks too much, gets in card games, wants nothing more than to stay in a small town of Montana and working for a newspaper. They are not much happening in his life, he does not want anything, static character. Dynamic character, dynamic characters are affected by plot developments. So, if static characters do not go undergo any personality changes, then on the other hand dynamic characters do. They become wiser, mature, more uh, responsible. So, we, we often use a term called self-realization, so that you find in the characters of dynamic people, self-realization. And this is the kind of character which is important in serious films, serious drama. You cannot have serious drama if you do not have very good characterization. But comedies thrive on static characters. If people start changing in uh, comedies, then there would not be much of a comedy there. Think of any static character which you know which never fails to amuse you. Mr. Bean. Rush hour, yeah. Mr. Bean is a very good example. Yeah. You, when you go and watch Mr. Bean part 1, part 2, part 3, he goes on a holiday to Paris or Whistler's mother, okay, wherever he goes, you expect the same, uh, even the appearance, his clothes never change, his body language never changes, and you expect that. And that is because all those things lead to comedy, but that is not the case in serious drama. Okay, uh, we have given the theory of round and flat characters by who? Vijay, any idea who gave us the theory of round and flat characters in a book called Aspects of the Novel? Yes, E. M. Foster in Aspects of the Novel gives us two kinds of characters, round and flat. Foster tells us that flat characters are two dimensional, two dimensional. That means, they do not have, they are not multifaceted, they are predictable. I am going to ask you, you people take keep taking down notes, but do not participate all that. I will ask you, give me some examples from who you think are flat characters. Yeah, think of something, I am going to come to all of you within a second. Uh, flat characters lack psychological depth and complexity. There are often cliches, representative characters, cliches, stereotypes. Now, think of certain examples. I am going to give you examples, but I want answers to come from you. Flat character. Vietnam War legends. Vietnam War movies. Big Lebowski, the hmm. dude's friend. Big Lebowski? The dude's friend. John Goodman. Dude. No, the dude's John, friend. John Goodman. John Goodman. Uh, dude's friend is a flat character, okay. Yes? Uh, Mr. Wolf in Pulp Fiction. Mr. Wolf um, does Kaito. not have too much of a screen time, but okay, yeah. Uh, and he is there for a reason. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, there is no complexity. Right. I would even say Uma Thurman's character in Pulp Fiction. Yeah, is very two dimensional. 
in pulp fiction yeah, yeah? okay um, okay uh, anything else from our own cinema our regional cinema or bollywood everyone <laughs> everyone is flash character okay give me all these everyone if you think all characters in our cinema are flat so give me some example most of the women casting even in central roles even, yeah in the yeah. i mean not women to women movies all the women are cast as just like props yeah the so uh, a standard time. heroine in a standard fair is always a flat character okay we know the routine thing so we don't have to get into details about that what what a heroine is expected to do so right dynamic characters so immediately we can think of uh, Malin Brando in Kazan's On the Waterfront. Please watch it during this long weekend. Rebel Without a Cause, James Dean. In fact, it is uh, very interesting to note that dynamism on a screen, you know, dynamic characters uh, started getting noticed especially with the advent of the so called method acting. So, uh, both Brando and Monty Clift as well as James Dean to an extent they were all method actors trained in uh, the Stanislavski method of acting. We will be talking about that at, at, a, at some stage. Flat. Campy characters, Campy. very flat. You know, uh, how many of you have watched a movie called Disco Dancer? Mithun's Disco Dancer, have you? Have you? Okay, please do watch it. <laughs> you know, of course, it is very incongruous in a film studies, this kind of a course, and then suddenly I talk about Disco Dancer. Okay, but do watch it. And it uh, it will give you a great insight into Bollywood camp. Okay, it has all the features of a camp. Okay, camp can also be serious. So, camp need not be confused with cult. Somebody was talking about is camp cult? Not necessarily, not necessarily. But yeah, characters are pretty flat because that's what camp is all about. And uh, the beauty of camp is that characters are flat. So, flat to round, round characters again are also dynamic. John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever, how many have watched the movie? Azar, have you? Okay, watch it all over again, the uncut, unabridged version. We will talk about the film uh, after the, uh, the end of this class. Okay, this hang on, wait, do not leave the class before um, this. So, and uh, Robert De Niro for example, in Raging Bull, dynamic characters, they have so, uh, multifaceted characters, round characters, there are many aspects to their characters. So, they are, you cannot say exactly that this is a good guy or a bad guy, they are in shades of grey. So, that is what I mean by round character and there is also a progression in the character. By the end of the film, there is a progression, okay. there is something, you know, the character has learned about himself and about life and about other people. My question to you, characters from very popular, everyone's favorite, Ocean's Eleven, Ocean series, what are they? How would you classify? Flat. Yeah, but then that adds to the beauty flat character. I mean, you expect these characters to behave in a way, to speak certain one-liners, okay. otherwise there would not be any ocean series. So, you want each, so each character is a stereotype, it represents a type, right. They tell you something okay. and you expect, I mean, if in, in the second series, if they start going against the type, you will be disappointed, I am sure. So, you want the same things to happen repeatedly in every sequel. So, therefore, when we talk up, when we come to uh, our discussion on the sequels of film sequels, we expect the same kind of 
characterization, but all sequels are not necessarily uh, uh, flat characters. For example, again Godfather had several sequels. Stereotypes, okay, tell me what is the stereotype in a movie like, hugely popular movie like Devdas? The dramatic, melodramatic mother apart from these. Melodramatic mother, it, yeah, it does not get more melodramatic <laughs> than what we saw in that movie, yes. The alcoholic lover, yeah. I mean we all love such lovers, right, who give up their lives <laughs> and uh, future and all ambitions for the love of their life. And uh, of course, you have the golden hearted courtesan, the prostitute with a heart of gold. That is a trope, that is a cliche, but then it is not a cliche common only to our films. The western also had plenty of such characters, the cliche. The, uh, we, remember we were talking about uh, the blonde and the dark haired girl. The dark haired girl would always have uh, dubious morals, but at the end would always take the bullet on her heart for the hero. Yeah. Characters are often enigmatic, interesting characters. For example, Juliet Binoche's character in Chocolat. Not much is known about their past, their backgrounds, where they come from, how they are going to end. They are mysterious. Can you think of more mysterious characters? Joker in the darkness. Yes, the Joker in the darkness. See, Joker is not physically powerful at all. He gets bashed up all the time by the <laughs> dark knight. But what makes him such a formidable opponent? <coughs> yeah, the mind games he is able to play. Yeah. And of course, you know, since we are on the topic of Joker, Joker is a good example of the unreliable narrator. Can you give me some example why? Yes. Several different versions of his past and he does not know which one. Do you know how I got these scars? Mm -hmm. uh, at one point, he tells uh, Maggie Gyllenhaal character that his wi wife was a gambler and her face um, and he gives you the entire story and then in order to appease his wife, he carves his own face. So, that is how he got the scars. At another point, he tells someone, his father gave him the scars, son why so serious, let us put a smile on that face, that is how I got a scar. At the end, he wants to tell <laughs> the Batman, you know again the mind game, you know do, know, do you know how I got these scars and we all know the answer to that. Okay. So, he is an unreliable narrator, we do not know his past, we do not know anything about him and uh, he does not give you any clues. So, unreliable narrator with an enigmatic past. characters as dramatic <coughs> foils to each other. Harold and Maud, have you watched the movie? She is 80, he is 20. Okay. She is in love with life, he is in love with death, they fall in love and it is not a platonic love, let me tell you. So, you watch the movie and she is 80 and he is 20 and they have a love affair, okay, Harold and Maud. But they are still very enigmatic, very dramatic characters, contrasting con characters and uh, uh, you know very, very interestingly done sketch of two kinds of people. I, uh, you know, I often think of this movie whenever I watch Zohra Sehgal on screen. You know, the way she banters with other characters, you know, she is a very interesting actor. So, if you have watched Savaria for instance, have you? Is there anyone in the movie? Do not get put off by Savaria's reputation. It is a very aesthetically, very well made, well acted film, okay, very well shot, very well presented. So, people snigger. We had Ravi K. Chandran with us, remember, who did the cinematography of Savaria. Okay. And he told me that Savaria is being taught. Uh, in uh, many American universities as part of their cinematography course. And it is a very well done movie, people just talk without watching the movie. So, Zora Sagal in Savaria is a very interesting character, um, even if you watch him with uh, playing you know Bachchan's mother in Chinikam, 
Okay. Full of life, you and always very dynamic. You do not find that to conventional flat uh, melodramatic mother. Characters acting as foil to each other. Two types of personalities, you know. So, one is good, one is evil, one is a strong and silent, the other guy is vivacious and uh, talkative. Can you think of an example? Shole, our most popular Bollywood film, okay, Jai and Viru are foils to each other. Good cop, bad cop. Um, seven, yeah, is a good study. Lethal weapon is a good study of foils. A foil often uh, is a trope in buddy films. So, as we were just talking, you know, good cop, bad cop, 48 hours, right? Midnight run with Robert De Niro, Rain Man, Tom Cruise, and Dustin Hoffman. Characters acting foil. Uh, if both of them are alike, it will be a boring fair after a while. If the plot arises, the interest in the plot arises because the, of the way the characterization is done. If you watch both these movies, you know, Midnight Run and Rain Man. Uh, you take off, take away the contrasting contrast in the characters, much of the plot would be lost. Okay, uh, characters can also be caricatures, not just stereotypes. For example, uh, um, Gloria Sonson's character in Sunset Boulevard. She lives, she is an actress past her prime. She lives in an ivory tower, oblivious to the fact that nobody wants to watch her films anymore. She keeps watching her old films uh, on the, in her home theatre all the time, okay, obsessed with herself. So, therefore, caricaturing a, an actress past her prime. And they could be comic as well as tragic figure in as in Billy Wilder's Sunset Boulevard. So, late motif, uh, just to give you an indication of what a late motif is, a uh, late motif could be a repetition of a single action or gesture or phrase or idea of a character. Often it adds value to the character. Rajni tossing a cigarette, Salman Khan doing things with his Raven sunglasses late motif. Yeah? People want to watch that. So, however, uh, flat character you may think Chulbul Pandey is, <laughs> okay. but the, you know the late motives add to his characters. So, that is a trademark thing, even a piece of music could be Joker's music, for example, Batman's music, they are all indicative of the character, they evoke this kind of character. James Bond, of course, we all know the music as a late motif in you know, and a catch phrase again indicates a character. So, I will be back and then Bruce Willis in the latest version of Expandable says, this time I will be back. <laughs> okay. Characters can be allegorical. They refer to certain kind, certain types in a particular socio historical period or context. For example, Gary Cooper's role in High Noon indicated or symbolized those people who were blacklisted during the McCarthy period. In the movie, he plays a sheriff where he is ostracized by the town people. Okay because of such, uh, you know, certain fears, certain malicious uh, <coughs> gossips about him, but later we realized that he was in the right. So, that is an allegorical character. Characters can be moral, can have moral dialectics, very ambiguous or can represent certain philosophical truths.
and what is the movie that comes to your mind? I mean, I can think of Ingmar Bergman's persona, Wild Strawberries, okay, extremely uh, philosophical, existentialist, uh, the seventh seal. How many of you have voiced uh, Bergman at all? Wild Strawberries. So, watch it, go through the movie, you will understand. It is not, see, do not go by formidable reputation again and again. I talk in this course about Chulbul Pandey as well as Bergman. So, what is the moral you should take away from my course? Be open minded, be open minded. I mean, you can talk about disco dancer as well as you can talk about um, being John Malkovich, right. So, uh, do not look down upon any kind of cinema as well as uh, uh, do not get, uh, do not get put off by a certain kind of cinema. Okay. It is Bergman, so I think it will go over my head. Why watch it? It is Kurosawa, it will be slow. It is Satyajit Ray, oh my God, he will all be all about some gross poverty, starving children, uh, famine and all those. It is not like that. That was the scenario only in Pathar Panchali. Okay. Many of Satyajit Ray's movies deal with very rich people, so you can watch them as well. Okay. For example, Charu Lata, okay. Charu Lata or uh, Jal Sagar. Okay. So, all these are very, so do not go by uh, stereotypes about people and films and filmmakers. Okay. Watch everything with uh, an open mind. So, watch Bergman, watch the wild strawberries. Okay. If you are not Facebooking at the same time as watching a movie or not attending to your cell phones, you will find lot of things which are interesting. John Malkovich, being John Malkovich, what is it about? Entering, up into another's mind. Entering into another person's head, okay. And what does that do to fear? It is not possible, yeah. So, it is it, actually an allegory. What happens uh, when you start? obsessing with people, obsessing about someone and then uh, you know, the aftermath of it. Any comments at this point? Any characters, in any interesting character you would like to tell me about? Travis Bickle is many things, yeah, high on inter, uh, internal action, internal conflict as well as external and external conflict and in, uh, action. Uh, he is a highly existentialist character. Yeah. He looks for a meaning in a meaningless world. <laughs> okay. So, that is uh, Travis Bickle's character. I mean, unfortunately, he never got uh, uh, any all those great awards for his acting, but I think he deserved it. Yes? Apocalypse now, okay. Are you talking about Brando or Sheen? Okay. Why do you think Sheen's character in Apocalypse Now is interesting? Have you watched Apocalypse Now? It's a very very complex role, very well done. Okay, watch it. Okay, he almost had that's the inside story. He had a heart attack while preparing for the role. You can well imagine the intensity. Okay, um, another great theoretician apart from E. M. Foster is Henry James in his Art of Fiction. Art of Fiction mentions something about telling characters and showing characters. Viji, while doing Henry James with you, did I ever talk about telling and showing characters? Okay. Can you recollect anything? Telling characters, you explained it with res reference to a novel. Yeah. So, Washington. good. Telling characters are when uh, a writer or a filmmaker tells you or uh, gives you a lot of details about the character. So, that means, he is telling you all about it, you need not rack your brains about understanding that particular character. Happens very frequently in novels, in plays also, 
where all the clues and all the descriptions are given. You know, she is sensual, he is greedy. So, you are at the, the, the writer is already helping you make up your mind about a character, showing no detailing. You just have to understand six degrees of separation by John Gower. Okay. Gower never takes the trouble of telling you anything about his characters, uh, uh, except that a, a particular character is a black American. That is all he tells you, the color of his skin. The others are rich white people. Then you have poor white people as well. Okay. So, that is all he will tell you, but he never tells you how to <coughs> interpret them. That is left to you. But uh, there are people who tell you exactly what to think of particular character. So, uh, that was a very common device in uh, most of our cinema, especially in a cinema till uh, the 90s. Now, we, of course, we are having lot of improvements in screenplay writing etcetera, but there was a time when um, to establish a character, what would the filmmaker do? He is a good guy, simpleton, what would he do? All good deeds in the world, every good deed and he will basically sing a song. In the song, he will do all the good things. Okay. He will help a blind man cross a road, he will give his coat to a shivering man, okay. he will give away his last penny <laughs> to a starving child or beggar, whatever. Okay. He will do everything that is. So, you are, what are you being told? Look, you are looking at a very nice guy, okay. so do not think. And when the bad guy would be there, what would he, he is a rich man invariably. In, in, in cinema of a particular period, all bad people were rich people. Okay. They would always drink, they would always smoke okay, and they would always be watching cabaret dances okay, <laughs> in a CD bar and in a five star hotel. Okay. That is telling us that look, this is bad, this is good. Showing characters, the filmmaker leaves it to you to make up your mind. Right? For example, it consider love, sex and dhoka by Debaka Banerjee. He does not tell you, I mean there is a guy who um, uh, uh, records uh, for the camera certain intimate acts with a girl. You are never told that the boy could be that creepy. You just go with the flow and then it happens and then we, ha we are left to decide uh, to ourselves that what to make out of this boy and that girl. Okay, so, that is showing character, the director would not go to extreme lengths to tell you what to make out of these characters, so, telling and showing. Whose character is that? Uh, Kevin Spacey. Kevin Spacey. Okay. Do you think that we are, to, I mean if you are told certain things about Kevin Spacey that poor cripple, oh, what will you do, cripple sit in a corner while we rob the place. Okay, that is misleading us, yeah, that is a very intelligent device. The entire plot is all about deception. We are talking about the unreliable narrator. Okay. Funny, funny games? No, uh, David Lynch movie, Mulholland Drive. Uh, um, you see, uh, again, um, it is an enigmatic character, it is also <coughs> a philosophical character. Okay. Yeah, the other girl is almost a foil to her. So, that is how you, Naomi Watts and the other actor, what is her name? Uh, in David Lynch's uh, Mulholland Drive. Mulholland Drive for obvious reasons happens to be a favorite of this institute. All the boys talk to me about <laughs> Mulholland Drive. For the last seven years, I have been hearing this. So, that means there is something about the movie.
Okay. So, um, we will meet on Monday. Thank you very much.